It's a tire on e-bike. You got an old man's bike. I like it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I am going to call the plan commission meeting for April, April 5th to order. Roll call, please. Uh, Trustee Kettleby Here. Commissioner Dequette. Here. Commissioner Case. Here. Commissioner Pedro. Here. Commissioner Vander. Here. Trustee Lucius. Here. President Taylor. Here. The staff report of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We were at public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone to address the planning commission on any issue. Please observe the time limit of three minutes while the planning commission encourages input from residents that may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noticed on the agenda. Do we have anybody? Um, I did not have anybody uh, pre-registered for a public comment. Uh, I do want to note that there was an email that was sent for the public hearing. Okay, we'll read that when we get there. All right, general business. I have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 1st, uh, 2021 regular plan commission meeting. I'll motion to move so. I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. So moved. I have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 16th. 2021 special plan commission meeting. I'll move approval. I'll second. Okay, thank you. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say. All right, number three, we'll take A and B separately. This is uh, regarding the request from Nick Hughes to amend the conditional use permit in the uh, Hillside slash Hilltop Overlay District, 2708 Birchwood Drive, Cross Plains. Do I have a motion to open up a public hearing? I'll second. I have a motion and a second to open up a public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say. So move. For public hearing is open. Uh, you want to start with reading the email and then go with the people? Yeah, we can do that. All right. So I did receive an email from Mike um, H. Uh, uh, search for gas. Uh, primarily concerned over uh, noise. I can read this email here. So we can understand. So uh, his email states. Uh, Hi, Bill. I do have a concern about this conditional use permit proposed for 2708 Birchwood Pass for the swimming pool construction. My biggest concern is noise. I can hear their dog barking up there since they are just atop the hill from our building at 25, excuse me, 2715 Birchwood Pass. I know they like to celebrate the 4th of July with fireworks as well, which we all can easily hear, but I don't have an issue with this since. This is common in neighborhoods all over the holidays. But again, they are close enough to Griffiths. So that being said, my concern is where the pool will be located and what kind of noise levels can we expect from this location in regards to the neighborhood. I know homes with pools can become party central and I just don't want to have my windows open at night during the summer and hearing any disruptive noise levels from their use of the pool. That's about it. I just curious why the village feels this could be an issue of concern for neighbors. If a conditional use permit is required, why would the village have restriction on this in the first place? Okay, is there anybody to speak? I don't see anybody here, how about on the... So it looks like we do have a, a number of people uh, that have joined us on Zoom. We have uh, Mr. Hughes also with us and can speak about the project. Um, again, I, I did not receive or have not received uh, to this point any other objections or requests to talk uh, public comment. 
All right. Um, does Mr. Hughes want to talk at the public hearing or? Yeah, I, I would uh, be up for talking um, whenever uh, that time would be appropriate. Go ahead, Nick. All right. Um, so yeah, I, the, the pool is going to be um, in the fenced in backyard in the R1 residential area um, that we're zoned for. Um, 2715, I believe, is across the street and down the hill. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the comment about fireworks. Um, because we live in the woods, we've never utilized any aerial fireworks. Um, the only thing we've ever done are sparklers for the kids on the driveway. Um, so I'm not quite sure um, what that is in regards to. Um, we do have a dog, but uh, we bring him in usually if he starts to bark because it's an indication that there's coyotes or deer um, or other animals that might be bothering him. Um, so generally, uh, you know, that uh, to address those points of the letter, um, I, I don't foresee um, it becoming a party home. We've got two eight-year-old kids um, and, uh, you know, we would not be people who are going to allow our, our kids to have, you know, unregulated, uh, you know, groups of people over, um, you know, at any point in time. Um, the liability that comes with a pool is such that, you know, you need to be aware of who is using it at what times and when, because uh, as the homeowners, we would be liable for any accidents um, and anything in that sense. So it, it would mostly be daytime events, um, you know, with friends and family, um, and it wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary than, you know, one or two families over just on a hot summer day. All right, thank you very much. Um, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. As a uh, motion and a second, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right. We will go to discussion and possible action of amending the conditional use permit uh, for 2708 Birchwood Drive for the swimming pool. Do I have a motion? So do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Open up for discussion. I only, I only have one question. And that is what what will be done with the excavate, excavated fill? Uh, I'm guessing there'll be a sizable volume of material that's on the hilltop. Are you intending to haul that off or yeah, absolutely. There wouldn't be room um, in the R1 residential area, um, and we wouldn't be dumping that fill. So our contractor um, is supplying the you know bid for um, removal anyway of, of excavated material. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Kevin? There seems to be some disagreement um, in the drawings between from last month to this month, exactly where the setback is and what is currently in or outside of the building setback. This one shows the black fence outside, or I'm sorry, inside the building uh, setback area. And the other one, the aerial photograph showed it, the fence and the structure of some sort or some place that may be outside of the setback. Um, and I just want to get a handle on what, what is actually the setback and ensure that they know, frankly, so they don't accidentally put this uh, outside of there. What, what assurances do we have that everything is inside of the, where it's supposed to be? So the, um, I, I can speak to that. Um, okay. the, the item that you're looking at that looks like uh, a standalone fence is actually silt fencing. Um, you know, we place that there um, similar to the original, um, you know, when the original structure was built um, <laughs> to prevent any uh, silt wash off down the hill. Um, during the construction because they would have heavy equipment moving in and out. Um, so that's not the actual uh, fence that's there. That is just a temporary silt fence uh, for the construction portion. Um, the existing fence isn't going to be moved or anything. Um, it's going to stay where it is. Um, and the drawings last time were us um, potentially seeing if that conservation area was an area that it could be placed. And now it, it appears to be inside because we have moved the actual outline of the pool uh, inside the existing R1 residential area with appropriate setbacks. And the, the current black fence then, if I'm correct, is outside of the, the um, existing setback. 
Uh, I believe it is, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other question? I'm just okay. confirming what uh, Kevin was talking about, that showing the pool actually nine foot, 10 inches inside that setback, that, that fence. Right? That is correct, yeah. yes. Anybody else? He got creative. He did what we asked. Yep. 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 All right. Let's. Uh, we're going to do a roll call vote, please. Trustee Campbell. Yes. Commissioner Defy. Yes. Commissioner Case. Yes. Commissioner Taylor. Yes. Commissioner Lambert. Yes. Trustee Hastings. Yes. For the Yes. All right. Okay, we'll go to number four, discussion and possible action regarding the conceptual plan and revised proposal for 1601 urban the Creekside Village. Yeah, so uh, you have the, my memo as part of your packet. Um, in regards to uh, the changes suggested by the plan commission at the February meeting. Uh, we do have uh, the development team here. I can let them walk you through their current proposal. Um, as you have seen in uh, the memo, uh, the process, this is the conceptual um, site plan. And so from here, uh, we'll would be going to the village floor and depending on what they do there, we, if, they, if it is a, if the conceptual uh, site plan is approved at the floor level, then we would set up for a, a public hearing on this project for the next village plan. We also have Mike Slyami, uh, our village planner, uh, with us. And so at this time, I'll give it to either uh, Jim or Al or Bob to uh, explain the, the changes in the site plan from February. Hey, hey, Bill, I was having a little, this is Jim, I was having a little trouble hearing you. Did you want us to speak at this point? Yeah, if you could uh, explain the, the changes in the, the site plan from the February meeting. Okay, is Bob, Bob Feller, are you on? I am. Yeah, you want to take this? Absolutely. Okay, thanks, Bob. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity to come back in tonight. Um, this is a site plan that probably looks a little bit familiar, but at the same time, um, some pretty significant changes have been made to it. Um, essentially, the unit counts that we were proposing originally last fall were are being maintained. We're still looking at a 40 unit um, apartment building, mixture of one and two bedroom units, and a seven unit townhouse building. Uh, but the difference is that we, we changed the orientation of the two buildings. The townhouse now fronts onto uh, Bourbon Road, which we think is actually a, a really nice um, solution to address the concerns that were addressed and <clears throat> excuse me, raised in those initial meetings. And that was the scale of the building as it addressed the neighborhood. So now we're looking at a two-story building that uh, has sidewalk connections to the street. So it presents as a very, I'm sorry? Which presents a very neighborhood friendly um, uh, you know, approach to it. And we still maintain keeping the parking to the center of the lot. So it's, it's actually bookended on both sides by the apartment building and the townhouse. We did change the uh, entrance point so that it's further west, closer to the intersection. And uh, th that was done twofold um, so that we could get the underground parking to work with the apartment building, but also to create some connectivity to that path. And ease a little bit of the uh, proximity of the building to that path. So again, the neighbors that uh, from across the street in the area that would like to utilize that walking path, they're not walking up against the building. There's actually some green space that separates them from the building. Um, so on the site, we're still proposing some on-site retention. It's not fully engineered, but we have brought engineers on board to take a look at and weigh in at a high level. Uh, they feel that we're not proposing anything that um, can't be engineered out. We did add some uh, patio space to the interior courtyard. So again, another amenity to the um, people of both buildings. Um, as you'll recall, the, um, the apartment building offered the services of uh, 
outdoor balconies for every unit. Um, In-unit washers and dryers, we're looking at high efficiency uh, heating and cooling. We are gonna go for a green building standard on the project. There is a potential of a solar um, array on top of the flat roof, which with a flat roof is natural for it, um, does not add to the height and does not impede views by the neighbors. And um, we also have exercise room and community room within that building. The townhouses are uh, three bedroom units with individual cars, uh, parking garages, um, on pad parking space as well. And the site is we, we increased the number of parking stalls by one, we got it up to 35 parking stalls. That's a high level approach of what we have done to this. Jim, is there anything that I may have missed? No, that was, that was I think, a good summary of the changes that we, we put in place. Again, this was to address some of the uh, feedback we got from the village um, to try to make a, a better site plan, a, a better uh, community on, on this particular site. Um, we did offer uh, some other information related to, um, we gave part of the market study for you guys to, to, to take a look at. Um, we did not submit the whole study, but tried to just pull out uh, the really kind of the more important pieces related to uh, the, the senior demand um, for, uh, a, you know, uh, affordable or and or senior apartments in, in this particular marketplace. Um, and then we just had the, uh, also just the, the, the letter, um, just a letter of intent that we submitted. So um, I don't know, Alf, if you want to add anything else. Um, I think each of the site plans we've done have had their pros and cons. This I believe is about the third or fourth major change. And um, we've done that in order to meet uh, the planning commission and the board's uh, concerns or preferences um, I, I think this, uh, as Bob has said, is it, it, aesthetically uh, uh, an attractive layout. Um, a lot of thought has gone into the land planning of this. Um, I might make make one more comment. Again, we you know we are trying to to give the village certainly uh, it's time that it needs to, to make this decision. Um, so certainly we um, have uh, per Bill Chang and, and his direction as well, um, brought this back in through the, the process for the month of April to allow the village to fully consider. Um, there was a comment that uh, certainly in, in December that this felt rushed um, so we, we do feel like we're certainly providing the village with an adequate amount of time to sort of make their final determinations on, uh, on really what we want is a, a multifamily zoning designation on, on this particular piece of ground. But um, we understand you guys have other concerns and considerations for this site. Um, but we, we do feel that from a timing issue, we, we are giving uh, the village at least at this point enough time to fully consider. I might mention that back in November, December, the only reason we were on the schedule that we were is that we had the opportunity to lock up financing uh, uh, in December. Uh, and as a result of not having the zoning in place, we could not submit our various applications for financing and therefore we did lose that financing. There's no guarantee in the future that we'll be able to get that financing again. We're, we're willing to give it a try, uh, but the future is always unknown. It's just in retrospect, we knew we had a, uh, or not in retrospect, we knew at the time we had a good chance at, at, at getting our financing and, and that's fallen uh, by the wayside. So we're now starting over again. And uh, we have plenty of time, but we still have to raise uh, eventually a, approximately eleven million dollars to to uh, uh, to make this project a reality and get a, getting it to break even point. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, do I have a motion? And then we'll get into discussion. I got a question first here. Oh, go ahead. Any effect the motion? Okay, got it. Is that a sidewalk um, up against the roadway? We are showing um, a side. Yes, we are showing a okay. sidewalk up against the roadway. Thank you. I'll, I'll make a motion. We approve the conceptual plan for sixteen oh one Bourbon Road. We have a second. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. We're open for discussion. Judy. On um, page thirty, am I confused? Is it sixty five and older or fifty five and older? It would be fifty five and older. Okay, I was just confused when I saw the sixty five. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right. I guess I'm going to, I got a couple comments for you. Um, one, I appreciate you sharing uh, the parts of the market study. I think that reassures me that um, there is the need for uh, this type of housing. So I, I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I also, um, Clearly, this type of housing would hit the checkoff list for us when we talk about diverse housing. So I think that fits it. My main concern with this, and it's not with your layout, is just that it appears that our business district is basically turning into an apartment district. I mean, this will be the fourth. Uh, apartment complex that we're putting in, which would most people would consider our business district. So I really do have concerns as as you mentioned to that game for me back in December, is that we're really using up space uh, for future economic development. And that certainly was a, a topic that the future candidates were of the board talked about at their forum. I know members of the board um, have done that and we're making strides to try to get on top of that, that we actually make a really good effort. Um, I'd love to see this project in Cross Plain. I'm just not uh, a backer of, of this, this location. But having said that, I just wanna give um, heads up for you to think a little bit about this. Um, if it does move forward, um, when it comes to the development agreement, um, I will be pushing for a strong language to keep it um, senior housing, since you clearly uh, have demonstrated that there's a need in the Cross Plains area for senior housing, and that's what it's being uh, sold as. So certainly I feel it's only fair that we hold to that deal the other thing um, that I would like uh, to work on, and we can certainly help with this, in your market study and in this housing, I believe there's going to be some of the units for homeless. And one of the biggest failures in Madison when they put up housing for homeless people is they just give them apartment. There's no furniture, there's no utensils, there's no plates. I mean, there's no, there's nothing. It's just a, basically a bare uh, apartment. So it ends up uh, not a real good condition. So I would ask that if that is the case, we have a number of churches and cross planes and social groups that I think would be wise to partner up. So if we have some of those housing units, we'd be able to at least uh, provide the bare minimum um, furnishing. So um, we're giving these people some, some help. Um, like I say, it's been absolutely a disaster in Madison when you put up housing for homeless and you don't give them any of the basic needs. So I would ask that probably in the development agreement, I will have that there needs to be some plan to help uh, furnish. And I'm not asking you guys to burden the cost of that, I believe this community will step up and uh, even St. Vincent de Paul would probably be willing to help. But if we're gonna do this, let's do it right. So those are my comments. Eric, did you wanna speak? 
Yes, what uh, I believe that the cost of the project last time you came forward, it was going to be about $12 million. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, based on this type of program, what would the tax assessment or the taxable amount of that be or a ballpark? Um, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, uh, you know, four, four to five million, somewhere in there. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thanks. Does anybody else would like to comment? All right. We'll go to a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Case? Yes. Commissioner Kevin? Yes. Commissioner Sander? Yes. Trustee Dusius? Yes. Trustee Keppel? Yes. President Lankel? No. All right, it passes. Thank you guys for coming and present, giving a presentation. Yep, thank you. Hey, thank you for your consideration. Yep, thank you. All right, number five, discussion and possible action regarding the conceptual plan for a condominium agreement for 3025 and 3027 Finn Street. You want a presentation on this? You make a motion or do you, or do you guys get going? It's pretty straightforward to me unless someone wants. I have only one question. All right, uh, go ahead. Uh, no, my only question is this. Um, how does this affect the division of the garage? There's one, there's one garage. It looks like it serves the two units. Yeah, so I can try to answer that. I, I thought that Kyle was going to join us. Uh, yes, I, can I step in here? Oh, I'm yes, Serena uh, Charlton. And I am here as a representative for, for Kyle and Kim, who are the owners of this duplex. Um, so I can just um, tell you that um, this um, proposed um, rezone to make it, it's right now, it's a, obviously a multifamily duplex. Um, they want to rezone it as a condo. So yes, the, the two car garage, it's detached from um, the, the main building. And that would um, be, um, part of the lot one. So lot two would have a cement uh, pad for parking. It's um, a space for three uh, parking stalls on lot two, because there cannot, there is not a garage on that side. Okay. Any, any other questions? Otherwise, let's go to a motion. I'll motion to approve the site plan. No second. So I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, conceptual plan for 3025 and 3027. Discussion. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I just I think I need a little help trying to understand what the effects of a condominium will sort of will be for um, uh, for taxes is one thing I think about, but but also um, do we really approve the uh, condominium arrangement, the conceptual plan? I guess it's similar to the last one. We approved the conceptual plan now, but then we'd approve the condominium uh, uh, bylaws that we're going to think about. That's all I, I saw. I saw the condo, the condo association is set up to plan development. Yeah. The plan development district has no limit on, on a minimal size or a maximum size. Okay. We don't have a specific district other than the plan development that allows for a condo setup. Does any do we have anywhere else in the village where this would apply? Like the after would be the same as what we see right here. So we took a look at uh initially uh looking or going to a twin house or a yeah. lot line duplex and the the requirement for that would be that each unit have separate ladders. Yeah. And so I so I read that, but what I guess I'm wondering, does this exist anywhere else in the village? Does a kind of situation like this exist? I don't know if there is. Mike, slightly with you in your experience with the village, have you seen this come across the table? Um, I'm not aware of one, but I want to remind the commission that we have a state statute 
that prohibits discrimination against condominiums. So we have to allow a condominium to form. Judy? Well, actually, Mike, is there one? Yeah, there's one on Austin uh, Glacier's like um, Helen Brand Drive on Continental. That's like right. Duplex. Continental. That's, oh, right, yes. And this was the same thing. It was probably about 15 years ago. And they went for a zero lot line because they didn't have the separate water. Because if you're going to shut the water off on one, shut it off on the other one. But if you're in a condo situation, then it's an association. So you can do that. And they went and they condoed them. I thought we had some up on Lawson, but we don't. I thought, well, I, mean, I know. No, we have zero Lawson. Yeah, that's different. Oh, they okay. have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Those are those were built as zero lot lines. So yeah. they each have a lateral. Any other discussion? Let's do roll call vote, please. Commissioner Zander? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Case? Yes. Commissioner DeCook? Yes. Trustee Kettleboiler? Yes. Trustee Ducius? Yes. President Wayne Yes. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Six. Uh, regarding the certified survey map for 2010. 2014 Main Street, and Mike's here with a question. This one is pretty straightforward. It's simple uh, lot split on um, property currently owned by 2014 uh, Main Street LLC. And uh, they have a bunch of buyers that are interested in purchasing the building. Um, you know, the current owner is interested in, in splitting the lot so that they may sell a lot, propose a lot of one for redevelopment. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to um, approve the CSM for 2010-2014 Main Street. Do I have a second? No second. All right, we're at discussion. Any questions? Is that is that description correct, Mike? It is 2010 to 2014? Yeah. yeah. Building. I okay, I know I noticed on the building it's something else. Well, it's for because the uh, Frank's Market used to be there, right. and the meat cutting. Mm -hmm. You know, that building was torn down probably about four years ago, five years ago. But yeah, there was four addresses there for where you okay. choose which one. All right, as long as it's All right. yeah. correct. All right, any other discussion? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same, so move. Thank you, Mike. Great, thank you. All it's right. Get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're on to our zoning codes. Um, I saw that Mike's lab, he just left us, so. All right, well, we can still talk, but we're not gonna, well, Let's just go until seven o'clock. Everybody comfortable with that? We came here. Let's yeah. let's let's do a little bit. Um, we we left off. Uh, we did the dwelling. So now we're on agricultural use. I don't think there's really much there. Um, did anybody have any comments on that? On the agricultural land use, I think it's pretty straightforward. It makes sense to me. So All right. Just, just a reminder for the for the district is actually labeled as the R uh, R H thirty five or rural board. Okay. Thank you. So then we'll go to institutional uh, land use, um, and this is like schools, right? Colleges and that's correct. Um, churches. Let's uh, try to catch up to you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So you said commercial? The commercial? No, no. We're at institutional land use. Oh, Page eighty-one. I, 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 I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't communicate well. So the first one is indoor, and I, I guess I'm just curious. 
why all of those would be conditional use. I can see the ones in residential, but why are we doing it for like a business park and light industrial and general industrial community mix? I guess yeah, I can so see Main Street if you want it. So this is a good reason why we should have Mike Slayer be here because they wrote the code on this. But my understanding is that because they don't, they're they're so special. Uh, these types of buildings uh, can, can go in different, you know, different directions. Um, that the conditional use permit is is suggested here, depending on you know, the specific district and depending on the the uh, uses within that district. So, so for, example, for example, you know, a church in a residential district may look a lot different in a industrial district, or may have different um, requirements that you would look for in an industrial district than you would in a residential district. You know what the conditional use permit does is it looks at then allows it across all. Um, no, I guess that doesn't make sense. Okay. So I think one of, yeah, so the same can be said for schools. You know, if you have a private school versus a public school, and yeah. depending on which district that, that they're in, you want to control um, how potentially the site looks like um, and, and push conditions that are specific to that district or would be friendly to that district. All right. All right. Um, then you go, does anybody have one for any of the open spaces or outdoor recreational? On the outdoor recreational, what is that all take including? I mean, yeah, so we have active and we have passive, uh, pretty much passive outdoor recreational are the trails, uh, shelters. Uh, your active is more uh, like tennis. Tennis courts, basketball courts, um, all that nature. So, if someone wanted to put a tennis court in their backyard, it's obviously conditional use. Oh, uh, someone no. would put. No, uh, that would fall under the residential. That's going to fall under Yeah. I, I, so, so, when we're looking at. Uh, let me, yeah, this is. Like, so, if Kurt's trying to do a volleyball court, then that would fall under this. No, that would fall under commercial. Great. No, this is industrial. Institutional. Oh. Yeah, 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 institutional. So, <laughs> it's okay, this is institutional. Okay. I thought we jumped into the next. I didn't know. No, no, we're still. Yeah, we're still in institutional because so, underneath that, it has the open so, space passive. Oh, yeah, so the way, the, way that, well, the way that we would look at, at this is under the, the, the top category of institutional land uses and activity outdoor recreation. It would only be allowed as a conditional use permit in the conservation district, in the business park district, light industrial district, and general industrial district. Okay. It would not be allowed in any of the residential districts or commercial districts. Okay, so just a question if the church is adding on to their playground. That's institutional. No, that would be so. Uh, the playground would be an accessory used to the church being the primary use. So the church is the church is the, the primary use. It would be a conditional use permit under whichever district it is, except for conservation and mineral extraction. And then the playground, the tennis courts, etc., would be an accessory use to the church. That's confusing. <laughs> I know that's why I'm trying to understand. So, so, if you think, so, like, so the same thing is if you think about um, like a basketball court in a residential district. So, like, if, if a single family home in that district, uh, would the, the, the primary use would be a single family home, the accessory would be a basketball court. You couldn't just buy a Residential lot in a residential district to put the tennis court on there. Does that make sense? Okay. And, and use it for outdoor recreation. But, um, but the I'm going to go back. So I own a house and I want to put a basketball court in. Do I have to come and get a conditional use permit? No. Okay. It, if if that district allows if that district allows it or if you're <clears> it. Okay. So 
But if you own a lot and you want to put a basketball court on it, you have to come and get a conditional use permit. It would not be without a house. If it's in the residential district, you cannot do it. You can do it at all. You'd have to rezone it. You'd have to either rezone it or combine the lots. Okay. And, and, and this is why this is really important. We have to really understand this because the law has changed. And now this commission makes the call. It doesn't go to the board anymore. So we have to really understand this. Is we're the end decision makers on conditional use permits. And I don't know if that's in effect now or is coming into effect. It's currently in effect. The village board uh, passed the ordinance and it was it has been publicated properly and so it is okay yeah. okay so that's why we really do and i am with you we really do have to start understanding this I mean, we rely a lot on mike because he doesn't yeah. understand it but we need to yeah question it right exactly all right um so let's and that same one if, if you look down below to the last uh, uh there's the last four, but the last three, it's community living arrangement, and they have one to eight residents, nine to 15, 16 plus. I don't understand why the one to eight, anybody can just do, but if you go from nine to 15, you have to do conditional, and the plus ones also. So what is the logic in that? Yeah, so that's the same logic as, as I think Mike had talked about uh, in, in a previous meeting where when you go up in the number of units or number of residents, um, you're having a higher impact in most districts. So then you're looking at potentially larger um, buildings, larger site plans, more amenities, et cetera. Um, those, those numbers are per acre though, right? Or something like? No, so these numbers are residents. So these are most likely uh, residential units. But I thought they were like residential units per acre, not yeah, per. So that's the yeah. that's the district that they that they would be. So the SR SR one is one unit per acre. SR three is three, so on and so forth. But this doesn't talk. And when you when they're saying community living, this is like a, a nursing home, for example. It wouldn't be apartment buildings, would it? No, it's it's. It's uh, community aspect, uh, and it's just specifically uh, defined in the zoning code. Okay. Well, these are like your group homes um, where you would have community spaces. Okay. Uh, along for each, each tenant. I think we want to. Honestly, I feel like if it is overnight, I think we would want to have some saying it. Well, I'm not saying we, I'm just trying to understand why at eight and we don't, and nine we do, yeah. because you know, again, we have to be, my understanding with the new law is it's, the burden is much higher on us to deny them. And so I'm trying to think in my head, what is your reason going to be if someone comes in and wants to put in nine so units? We, we, we could actually take and change that community to live in one to eight, one to two, and then eight to 15. And that way we can control everything that goes up. Correct? We don't know that. I thought we right. wanted to get less right. involved right. in people. Well, that would, I mean, right. right. But I'm just saying, if you, you know, if you want to know the difference, I mean, you can make that number whatever you wish. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, in my head, I'm trying to figure out why, where, what the cutoff is. Now, I, eight makes sense because you have eight unit buildings. So that, I mean, you know, four, eight, 16, you know, those are common. So I'm guessing that, but I'm just trying to think. If we're talking to somebody and they're coming in for a conditional use, because they're not going to come in for the one to eight, but if they're doing a 10 or 12, they're going to. And so what is our justification in that? That's what I'm just, I'm I, just I, asking. I'm not like I disagree with you guys. I think kind of like Bill said, it's a high, it's much higher density per, you know, per acre. And it's going to have more impact. You're probably going to have more water runoff issues. You're probably going to have a lot more uh, likelihood of more impervious surface. Yeah, but isn't that covered in our zoning? When you they, it doesn't matter what we say. We, that's a separate issue. It's got to make ninety percent. Ninety percent. You know what I mean? So that's I'm trying to get the. You're right on all that, but we have all these yeah. other 
ordinances that cover that part of it. I mean, you know, the density, you're right, but I mean. So a lot of the, the conditional use um, requirements or, or the reason why you would want conditional use permit application mm -hmm. in a specific district is because that use doesn't exactly fit the mold. And so what you're trying to do is by granting that permit, get it to <coughs> as friendly to that district as possible. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for example, a one to eight unit residence with group living uh, facilities uh, would be friendly in your residential zones as suggested here in your main street. However, when you get to the nine of 15, you're talking about more density. And so I want you to also think not only new development, but potential rezones. Um, so if you're converting, say, a large house into a group home, uh, it may fall under, under that, that district and is allowed by conditional use because of the physical um, restriction on that property. The question becomes what conditions do you want to put on there to make it more livable. Sure. Um, so then that's why you see when you get to larger 16 plus, it's not permitted in any of the single families, but is permitted in the larger, um, the, 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 the less dense or the multifamily where, where it fits better in that category. Yeah, I, thanks Bill. That, that was, that was the, made it the easiest to understand anything you said today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that the you know the community living arrangements of you know, nine fifteen residents in a single family residential uh, zone makes no sense. So I would get rid of all those C's that are in nine fifteen you know uh, in single family um, up to including the duplex. It looks like basically copying what's below it for sixteen plus. That's that's. I was almost going to say go for 19 plus. I just used the line of number 10. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying. A copy yeah. line 10 into line yes. 9 to get rid of the conditional uses of 915 in the single family area. That would be a huge community living arrangement in a place where we said single family, even if it's five. Um, that's, that's still five, you know, that's more than tripling the amount of people living in, in that area. So I would just I would get rid of it because if they really wanted to, I mean, that's what I was. That's my no, opinion. and I, I think that's good. But let me ask you, going on that same thought, if you look at that multifamily residential at sixteen, why wouldn't we just allow them to do it if it's sixteen units that they're renting out or sixteen and change it to these? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, fine. I mean, let uh, you, you see what we're saying, Bill? Yeah. So yeah, let's just take notes. So I don't, we're not going to vote on any of this. We're just throwing it to, you're so, right, Mike's so got to look at it. But we're, we're matching the, the residence to the density, basically. Right. We're saying there isn't a difference between a community living arrangement versus a, you know, the multifamily residential. Unless Bill has, some, uh, I mean, now, uh, but Mike has. But aren't you, aren't you just, Referring to the one that's under the dwelling unit uh, that the C is under, from the eight to sixteen. Yeah, so that, but that's under multifamily and not under single family. Yeah, multi. Yeah, I'm looking at multi. I'm looking at the one I'm looking at is multifamily sixteen. If you go all the way down, if, for the nine to fifteen, let's say that should be a P. I don't know why it's a C because we're already allowing a sixteen unit. Right, 16 apartment building. So, so can I? So, on the board, on, on the screen here, we are proposing is all the C's that are highlighted. Right. Stay, stay. Stay, oh, change stay to P's. P's. Oh, and all, all of the ones here would go to come off. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't know about rule holding. I don't know exactly what that means, but I would take it off. So rural holding is, is basically our ag agricultural district. So all, all the ones highlighted in, in red would be removed. All the highlighted in yellow would be changed to these. 
I think you just about one too many. I think you remember the Sealer uh, rural folder. That's I mean I I would remove that C. You would remove that one? I mean, community living arrangement in, a, in an agricultural field. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to. Do we want that in the middle of 35 acres? Okay. So this, uh, well, we don't have. I, a, I, I'm just saying. Yes, yeah, because it's in the one right below. It. Yeah, no, we're, I think we'll remove that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Then, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. And I guess I would keep the C's for that 16 plus because I think you're now getting really big. Mm -hmm. and I guess we can just keep the one. Institutional residential, I don't think we'll get dorms here, but I don't know, Eric. Are you going to expand and have dorms? Pretty? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> the school, Eric. Yeah, yeah. All right, very good. Ted University. <laughs> All right, we're just going to, I want to just go maybe 10 more minutes. Uh, let's just start with um, commercial because this, I think, is. Uh, the one where this is the one that really needs, I think. Yeah, thought. So uh, the first one is office, and that looks pretty good. I'm not. Anybody have any concerns with that? I think all the categories are covered. All right, we'll go to personal or professional service. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Uh, indoor sales or service. I think we're good on, on, on that. Okay, outdoor display. I'm not really sure. Yeah, let me find a definition for you. That's interesting which one you can do with it. Yeah. The main street, there's nothing else. Huh. Okay, so outdoor display uh, are land uses where the sales and display of merchandise or equipment is conducted outside of an enclosed building. Uh, in, examples include, but are not limited to out, outdoor garden centers. Outdoor recreation equipment sales, monument sales, and manufacturing mobile housing sales. I suppose used car lots and car lots. Well, Culture's no. implement. We have the oh yeah, you got a separate one. Yeah, I can see. Single lumber. Yeah, displays out. So I guess uh, are we okay with that? We don't think that anybody would have that in a business park or light industrial. Probably not in the industrial part. Uh, they're most, it's not, it's, I'm, they're, you're, you're most going to see that stuff like on a main highway with people for, like that traffic is on a regular basis. I'd say like an exception to that might be like a ideal rental or something, you know, crane rental place or yeah. equipment rental thing where they got a lot of stuff sitting outside. And I've seen those certainly in industrial well, parts. So would manufacturing or someone, let's say, makes pipes and they store them um, out Oh, yeah, oh, outside. Right. Yeah, because they don't have the housing for that yeah. Yeah, product. Yeah. That, yeah. Would, that would not, so that the outdoor display is not the primary function of that. So, okay. It's, it's no, that would would be defined as outside or exterior storage. Um, okay. If it's a separate lot or yard. Um, but if they, if it relates to the um, primary manufacturing, then, then that would be the secondary use. So if you read our code, we have permitted by right primary, and then we have permitted by right associates. Okay, all right, thank you. Judy? So it's like, like the world of variety, when they had the greenhouse, they had all their mulch and all that stuff outside, they would still be able to do this, even when, right? Or would they have to come to us? For they would, we would require a additional use permit. Okay. Even though their primary business is inside. It's, it's retail, but then their 
the the sale items are are meant to be for outside okay. Okay. Sure. So is everybody kind of comfortable with that then? Yeah. Those two categories, those two areas, and so make sure we know. All right, the next one. Why there's a seal there? In, in, yeah. a, in a real holding. No. Yeah. Yeah. Woodworking shop, I think. Yeah. Put it in Fill up the. Huh. Okay. What's that? Do? What's that first word before a production shop? Artisan. 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 Artisan? I was looking at it as artesian. Yeah, it's like water. I can hardly read it. For some reason, that one all blends together. Yeah. All right. That's interesting, though. All right. So I don't have a problem with it, but I, I don't know why it's uniquely there. But it's like a lonely thing out there. But mm -hmm. all right. Physical uh, activity studio. Okay, now why are we making all that conditional use? Is that like a is yeah. that those are your yoga studios? Your is smart body. fitness fall under that or yeah. snap fitness or whatever it is downtown? So why are we asking for a conditional use for that? Why can't someone just start a business with that? I mean, if they go into a rent a spot in the mall. I don't know why you couldn't have a yoga studio in, you know, in Glacier, you know, Square. Heck, the fire station allows oh, somebody to run. What if they all cons consider a, a physical, what about a massage car? Uh, so that's, there's, there's, there's yeah, that does, that, right? does that fall under a different category? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sexually oriented land. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure that we <laughs> know. <laughs> There's a separate one, so I'm just saying that on the class part, it's not necessarily labeled as that. Okay. <laughs> I, I was waiting for someone to say that one. I'm like, that's not where I think we should go under. <laughs> so let's so, yeah, talk about I think you can add light industrial and, and, and general industrial to the piece on this one as well. And turning all those C's to piece. Yeah, just yeah, makes sense. I don't have one. Problem with that, I don't think. Again, we'll run this all by mind. Right. right, sure. Yeah, right. We might be missing something, but I'm yeah. not sure why we wouldn't just allow those businesses to yeah, uh, operate. I, I agree. I think that's going to change. Wait, you want those to be yellow? Oh, yellow. And then you also want to put it under light industrial and central industrial panel? Uh, general industrial, yeah. That's what my comment General? Is. Okay. I mean, uh, I'm not sure, sure, but uh, yeah. So general, so general industrial is a heavier, heavier used in the light industrial. Okay. So, um, I mean, you could have it in, in both of those. I mean, if you, you know, I've seen it done that way where empty warehouses become that the studio space. Uh, oh, okay. but yeah, we kind of depend on whether or not you want them in that district or you want to be sold out. Well, those indoor golf baseball oh, soccer yeah. facilities all end up in industrial areas oh. because they're all you know they're warehouses essentially, big flat open areas. And so, kind of like Kiva and stuff, yeah, yeah, Kiva and yeah. baseball. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that, that's Eric's cool. opening one of those two, one with school. <laughs> one with school, <laughs> that was all do it all. <laughs> so add, add that to the light industry on general industry. Yeah, uh, except that we're trying to, we don't have much lighter general industrial space, and we um, want that used for the one of these, you know, a fizzle. You want my honest answer? I don't think we'll ever get general uh, industrial or light industrial. We have light industrial. Yeah. What do we call? Oh, all? PI. Yeah, yeah, we have PI. Okay. We're probably. Are we considering light industrial? Yeah. 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 Ye
Is that okay? okay. Yeah, yeah. So we are, we are, we are, I, I just looked at you know yeah. the space that you What's need. That? Yeah, Arizona is best. Yeah, no, I, oh. yeah. I understand what you're saying. I and I think what they're looking at is not that someone would move in and make a sports center and uh, general industrial, but if all of a sudden, uh, let's say um, the um, B and B closes that one on Bourbon, if someone wants to come in and make a soccer indoor soccer, they could do it. It's not like we have any empty land that's zoned like commercial or general end up doing. Well, I guess they were saying we yeah, have, have industrial oh, empty, empty land. No, we don't have any empty. It's nothing empty, so it's all going to be already built anyway. No one's going to come in and build. I'd, I'd be more inclined to make it a C than a P. Okay. Just, just you, make, you're okay with opening it up, but I'm okay with opening it up. But if it's once. prime industrial space, you know, even if it's just theoretical, yeah, not just allowing somebody to use it for something else, we really would like it to be industrial. I, I, I can go with that. I would keep those other one piece, but I guess those last two. Are you okay with that, Kevin? Yep. Yeah. All right. Why don't we end right now? Because it's I said seven uh, seven o'clock. Um, so we will continue. We're uh, well. Actually, before we end, can we just go to the next one? Indoor commercial entertainment. Would that not fall under the soccer field and the golf inside the industrial parks? See, I thought that was a strip joint. I'm, no, not, I'm serious. Well, that would fall under your sexual. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I assume that would be like. I know a while back that everybody put zoning in to stop the spread. And, uh, they, and they put it in industrial um, with a conditional use. Person. Yeah. You know, remember when uh, the red, the old the, the, the mouse, the red mouse was going to do it. And, you know, Visions has been trying to move out. Uh, Silk got in on 14. But I just remember I was on the board then. Where everybody was recommending get an ordinance so you can. Uh, so that's so that's yeah. Uh, I don't know which but, one. But that's that's, 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 that's the sexual. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, 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 oh, that sounds like a separate section. That's the correct. Todd is correct. Okay. So the indoor entertainment are your pool halls, your taverns, the indoor golf range. I'm assuming right. fall under that yeah. soccer field. I mean, so, I'm just looking at. We're already discussing that before the conditional use permit for the other buildings. Before we forget what happens next month, I would just cover that one but now. Okay, well, let's talk about it then. That's the only reason I was asking. So, why would you, so are you suggesting we make the current C's P's and then the next two foot C's in? Yes. So it matches the one above it. We're doing the same thing. Okay. I, I certainly could. Correct. Well, could you go back to that uh, definition, please? There's a lot of stuff in here, restaurants, taverns, kids, laundromats. Okay, thank you. So the question is, do you want, would you want things like restaurants, taverns, bars, bowling alleys, and your, your industrial districts? But we were at, we were gonna put them at C, conditional. Yeah, the, 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 the light industrial and general industrial would, would be C's, but the other one would be permitted. So, or, yeah. So if you put up, if you, okay, so the, the conditional use permit process now requires for the, the planning commission to grant the, the permit unless you can scientifically provide evidence that it, it shouldn't be there. Uh -huh. So by allowing it in the general industrial, you are giving yourself less power. So if, if you, so, Potentially, someone could come in and want to put a restaurant in a general industrial district and meet all your conditions, and you would have to allow them to do that. Okay, but well, let me alternatively, it, alternatively, there's nothing there, right? No C, no P, and we'd have to, they'd have to request a rezone in order for them to do it. Right. So it's not like we're limiting anybody from doing it forever. They can still come in and say, all right, we want to do this. Okay, we'll apply for a reason. Yeah, so that's that's okay. where the that's where the authority is because to as we've seen to tonight, the uh, so the, the reason is a legislative policy making decision. So that goes to the board. That that comes to the planning commission and that goes to the board. Whereas the conditional use permit, you have to grant them that they meet your your plans. Okay, okay.
avoiding seas, I think is what caught out here. Mm -hmm. Wow, I thought that was it. Uh, yeah. And that, I guess that makes sense when you put it that way. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should just leave it blank. Leave it blank then, yeah. No, I just assumed, like, I wasn't thinking bars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we want, we want, we still want to change the C's to P's and just leave the, the blanks in the, the industrial districts or this, this in, indoor virtual. Yeah. Do we need to in this neighborhood and mixed fields? Well, I, I, I mean, do you want a neighborhood bar? Yeah, what's the difference between a neighborhood and community mixed use? I was going to ask that question. Right there. What, what do we have on Main Street right now? Uh, on Main Street, we have oh, that's, that's uh, yeah, MSMU, Main Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I don't believe we have any uh, neighborhood mixed use in our district right now. Would community fall, fall with, uh, with the, doing the uh, Rental of a building out for a wedding or the, like the bed and breakfast building is that would that be that kind of scenario? Well, I, I think, think that, that would be breakfast has its own. Yeah, that is that PUD because we've done just about every lot on Main Street of PUD, so that kind of falls under it. This would be uh, mixed use. We don't have any, but I could see where let's say one of the houses where we have a strip of, house, of the houses on Main Street, someone. There's a fire or something, let's say, and they knock it down, they sell it, and someone wants to put a bar. I think mean, that would fall into the mix use. I don't know what we would. Someone could be put into that, where you have a mixture of commercial and residential. Yeah, that's exactly it. So the only area that we have a neighborhood mixed use would be on the corner of County P and Tennis. The dentist yeah. office. Oh, the dentist office. Yeah, and the power board place right across. Because the Drayson's one, the Drayson's one, when put Drayson's back. That's what I was wondering. It's still for the bar back. Well, I was going to ask you. I mean, with Drayson's bar yeah. back. This. Could you put one back over at our park, like the pots and reopen, or is that considered residential? I believe that's known as conservation. Oh. Yeah, because we bought it and put a part of your park. Oh. Remember that? It's it's known as it's known as a uh, single family residence. So, so Tilly to the off the park. <laughs> no, I Millie really to Millie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell me Millie too. <laughs> All right. Well, this is good. We're starting to learn something here. So we will pick up at outdoor commercial entertainment. Yeah, just yeah. if you could just shoot that to Mike and then he can. Tell us why we <laughs> what we what we forgot to think about when we were suggesting that. But it's yeah, our four choices. <laughs> I wish I'd be allowed to speak without you. Yeah. <laughs> Just clear the place. <laughs> All righty. So do I have a motion for adjournment? So move. Do so I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Eric, thank you. Yeah, that's yes, Eric, thank yeah. you very much.